Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules in the Blood TV for our Monday review episode as I look back at Saturday's convincing and deserved 3-1 victory over a hapless Southend United. Um, really, really good performance from the boys. Uh, I thought from whistle to whistle, we were absolutely spot on in everything that we did. And aside from maybe a five to ten minute spell just after we threatened to let Southend back into the game, um, when they pulled it back to 2-1 courtesy of a Simon Cox strike, I thought we were... Pretty much in control throughout. Thought we were really good. Thought our game management was spot on. Thought defensively we were really solid. And I thought we posed a real threat over the 90 minutes going forward. And I think it could have been five, six, or seven, and that wouldn't have flattered what is a very poor South End side, to be quite honest. And that's not just me being biased. I spoke to a South End fan after the game and he said that they were absolutely shocking, devoid of ideas, confidence, and, and pretty much everything that you need to be a relative success at League One level and it's, it's worrying times for them. But in terms of us, a really good afternoon. Um, yeah, first half, thought we were super dominant. Probably deserved to go in at the interval leading by more than just the one goal, courtesy of Alfie Jones's strike. I think if you remember in the first seven or eight minutes, uh, goalkeeper Mark Oxley, and we'll get on to him a little bit in a second, uh, second when we talk about the second half as well, made a really good save from Mikhail and Jolly who was bright throughout, um, got down low to his right and tipped one round the post. Shortly after that, Brandon Hanlon had a shot that looked like it was arrowing in towards the top corner and Oxley flung out an arm and, and, and bashed that round the post. And then he made an even better save. Uh, shortly after that, ball was cut back to Ollie Lee, who whips in an effort and Oxley, going the wrong way, manages to shift his weight back and tip it over the bar. Uh, on top of that, Ollie Lee's hit the crossbar when he probably should score. Looks like he went for power and it crashed off the underside of the crossbar and dropped down onto the line but not over according to reports uh, Mark Byrne had a goal disallowed looked to be offside not too many complaints from us but it was another a good period of play that managed to carve out another chance for us uh, and Brandon Hanlon should have scored with a header six yards out middle of the box no marking and headed it wide so that's three, four, five, six, seven really really good chances including the goal in the first 45 minutes and I think if you was a South End fan or Gary Waddock, the caretaker manager, you probably thought you got away with one getting in at the interval, just trailing by the one goal. Um, and second half, we didn't let up. Within the first minute, we scored a good second. Brandon Hanlon, again, who I thought was absolutely first class throughout the game, uh, broke down the left like he likes to do. Done the defender with some pace and power and then had the intelligence and the awareness to, to stop and cut back onto his right foot. He looks up, picks out Ollie Lee, edge of the box. Little layoff from Ollie and Stuart O'Keefe bent a, a really good effort into the far corner. Looks like Oxley got a slight hand to it but couldn't keep it out. And, and from there, you thought Jules were just going to run away with it. Um, Southend looked devoid of any sort of confidence and we looked like we could carve them open every time we attacked. And It was a soft goal that we conceded. Uh, quick free kick from them. We switched off and Simon, o, uh, Simon, o, Simon Cox's effort probably weren't the best, but it caught out Jack Bonham and it went through him and underneath his arm. And suddenly Southend had a little bit of belief, but in credit to us, we rode out the little spell that they did have, um, managed the game pretty well. I don't remember Jack Bonham having a save to make aside from one smothering stop in the first half when they threatened to get in behind through, um, who was it? Can't think of his name. Bear me two seconds. The lad who was wearing the mask. Looked like Phantom of the Opera. Stephen Humphreys, sorry for the delay in that one. But yeah, um, Jack Bonham come out and did that really well. Made himself big and stuck out a big arm and managed to smother that. That was probably the only two real chances they had in the game. Um, apart from that, it was all us again, second period. Stuart O'Keefe scored a good goal, like I've already mentioned. Brandon Hanlon scored a real poacher's finish at the end after Oxley spilled Mark Marshall's shot. Um, Brandon Hanlon forced Oxley into a good save as well shortly after O'Keefe had put us two in front. And in fairness to Oxley, he saved well with his legs. Uh, I think if that had gone in, the floodgates really would have opened. But um, And then, of course, we had that weird period from the 55th minute to the 20, uh, 75th minute where they bought on a substitute. He then decided to try and behead Conor Ogilvy and got rightly booked. I think he then went through Conor Ogilvy again, got away with it. And then three minutes later, after his 63rd minute caution, 
decided to try and put Barry Fuller in a golden road stand and was rightly sent off for two bookings. And from there, it was always going to be even more of an uphill task than it was beforehand. Um, and then, yeah, after that, um, we got two penalties, which leads me on to uh, a little in focus what I'm going to do, and that is this player. Mikhail and Jolly, um, first penalty, he stepped up, tried to whip it to the keeper's right, he clipped the outside of the post and went out for a goal kick. After uh, a foul on himself, he earned the, the penalty himself after skinning Harry Lennon for pace and, and driving into the box. Um, and then not three minutes later, ball gets cleared, Max Amar picks it up uh, and gets clipped, goes over. Second penalty in 180 seconds, fair play to Jolly, stepped up. Uh, took responsibility again. This time he decided to go the other way, but it was a good height for Oxley who flung himself to his left and tipped it round the post for a, a corner. Young Mika, bless him, collapsed to the floor, looked disconsolate and looked like the world. Uh, he looked like he wanted the world to swallow him up. But in credit to the boys, they got round him. Alfie Jones and Mark Burma quickly on the scene, got him up on his feet and said, keep going. And I thought he was really good aside from the two penalty misses. He's involved in the first goal. Um, Bag of tricks on the left-hand side, managed to dig out a cross, which they only partially clear, and Alfie Jones scores from about 20 yards with the aid of a deflection. I thought his pace caused problems all afternoon. Um, his trickery caused problems all afternoon. Like I say, he won a penalty with his raw pace. Um, unfortunately, couldn't convert. Um, and I think if he had scored, it would have been well-deserved because I thought he was really, really good. Um, tricky afternoon for him in the, the sense that he has missed twice from 12 yards, but it's an odd one because the two penalties that he's taken before that for us this season put away no problem at all. Um, both in front of the Raynham end again, I believe. One was against Wickham in the league to seal a 2 0 win, and the other one was a late spot kick against Newport in the uh, Carabao Cup earlier in the season, which he dispatched really well. So I'm sure give it a couple of days and Mika will be absolutely fine. And, and Steve Evans speaks about him on the back page of Monday's Medway Messenger and says, the kid was in tears, revealed Evans, I'm a very loving father and a very loving manager of my players. I think they would say that is the case Monday to Friday. Um, he said, I just reminded them that he was going home to his beautiful person, that is his mum, who is particularly close to, and his sister and his niece. So it seems that Meek has got good people around him and Evans may have got ahead of himself and apparently he's promised Meek and Jolly that he will play against Portsmouth next week, but... Um, he does go on to say, I wouldn't fret about him taking another one. I know people might say, how can you say that? But his penalty taking is normally so deadly. And yeah, that's what I've just said. The two penalties that he's taken before this weekend were both superbly struck and, and, and both resulted in goals for us. So I think he's a really good player. He's going to have games where he's poor. He's going to have games where he's inconsistent because he's still learning the game. And it's his, his first full season playing at, at this level. I know he's been out on loan before to kill Marlott, but I wouldn't say the level up there is as good as what it is in League One when you look at the likes of the teams that are in this division, the Sunderlands, the Ipswich, the Rotherhams, all that type of um, type of outfits that you have to play against, the Peterboroughs. Um, but yeah, I think we are going to have to bear with him at times and we'll probably be frustrated by him at times, but I don't think getting on his back is going to help. And I thought, like I say, aside from the two penalties that he's unfortunately not managed to stick away, I thought he was really, really good and at the heart of plenty of good stuff that we did as was his strike partner, and that is Brandon Hanlon, who netted the third, um, but not before the away keeper, Mark Oxley, had endeared himself to the home support by trying to do a bit of gardening with the penalty spot at the award of each spot kick. I don't know how he managed to escape a caution when their um, young fullback, uh, Wamono, managed to get cautions for the very same offence, but really disappointing, wasn't it? when uh, Oxley spilled a routine save from Mark Marshall late in the piece and allowed Brandon to tap the third one in and we all in the rain and let him know what we thought of him and karma, if you believe in it. Haha. <laughs> but yeah, back to Brandon himself. Another really good performance. Um, I still don't understand why people continually want to try and dig him out and criticise him. He's, he's in his second full season at this level. He ended last season really well. Um, he probably could have double what he's got this season already but he tended to start last season slow and then got just better and better as the campaign went on and he's got nine in his last 26 for us Brandon Anlin which is no mean fate at this level and 
I think if he if he went at that rate over a whole season, it's basically one in three. So if he plays forty five games, he's getting fifteen goals. I think we'd all be happy with that. Not to mention the amount of tireless running he does off the ball, the amount of goals he's involved with without actually scoring himself. Like I said, he was involved in the the second this week. Um, he's been involved in plenty more already this season, and yeah, really pleased for him. And I think the more he plays and the more he scores, obviously the, the confidence will grow and I just think he'll get better and better at this level, which is great and can only benefit us. Um, and he talks about owing us a performance. He said, we owed the fans, those that travelled to Oxford and the boys got together from minute one. I feel we played really well and deserved the three points. Absolutely spot on. And he played a big part in that. Um, last paragraph of Luke Cordell's uh, match report this week. This was a big win and Priestwood was rocking at the end. Bigger challenges will come, but Jill showed plenty of attacking threat and on another day he could have had five or six. 100% agree with that. I think our next home game is Peterborough, which should be competitive, feisty, uh, based on the fact that it's Steve Evans' old club and our home form is starting to improve. Um, I tweeted out over the weekend that we've taken um, 13 points, I think it is. No, 10 points, sorry, from six games at home, which equates to 1.66 points per game. So if you base that over a 23-game home campaign, you're looking at nearly 40 points straight away with your home form. Obviously, the away form has not been as, as good as we desire so far, but if we can get that right and maintain the performances and the results at the Priestfield, then I think we'd be absolutely fine. I've said plenty of times, we won't be in a relegation battle this season. I still don't think we'll be in the top six. I think we're a little way short, but I'm still sticking to it. I keep saying it. I've said it a hundred times. I'm sticking to my prediction of ninth. Um, and I can't see it's been any danger at all. Um, right, finally, before I wrap this episode up, match ratings just to compare to Luke like we always do. I'll say Luke's first and then ours. Jack Bonham, seven. Six for us. Barry Fuller, we both gave seven. Max Amar, we both gave seven. Um, Conor Ogilvy. Uh, Luke gave seven, we said seven and a half, thought he was best of the, the four defenders. Tom O'Connor both seven, so not too dissimilar at all there. Midfield, Stuart O'Keefe, we both rated eight. Uh, Stuart, uh, Luke gave Alfie Jones an eight, we gave him a 7.5. We both gave Mark Byrne a seven, both gave Ollie Lee a seven. Uh, Mikel and Jolly got a seven off of Luke, we said 6.5 on account of the fact that he probably had, he did miss two penalties, he had to take a little bit off, but... He was very good on the whole. And Brandon Hanlon, Luke gave a seven and we said seven and a half because of the fact that he did score a goal. And substitutes, we didn't give a rating for Jack Tucker or Alex Jakubiak and we both agreed on Mark Marshall was a six out of ten. Um, right, that is it from me for tonight. Uh, there will be um, a question and answer session this week. So keep an eye out on the social media for that. Get your questions in. Obviously, I'm going into hospital on Thursday so there'll be no video Thursday night in terms of a match preview, unfortunately. I do apologise. Um, but the idea is to record the Q&A on Wednesday evening and then put that out the weekend so it gives some content because I've had to knock Pompey away on the head now because of this knee operation and also the fact that we weren't sure whether the game was going to go ahead. It is now definitely on. So safe trip to all those that are travelling to Fratton Park. Um, it's a gimme now, isn't it? Hopefully. Um, be loud, be proud. Sing to your horse and... Make sure that you help the boys bring back three points again because it'd be great if we can go to Fratton Park and, and get another positive result. Right, that's enough from me this evening. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You know where we are on all four social media platforms. And until next time, up the jills.